Hello, welcome. Um, welcome to the Absolute Canine mini course. Um, we are very, very, very excited to have you um, joining us in this training journey. Um, we are going to jump right in. Um, what we want to help you with is how to change life with your dog today. Things you can do right away to start making your situation better with your dog, regardless of what it is. Um, all of these tips are designed to really just start to change your understanding, change your view, um, uh, you know, change your, change your perspective of your dog and just start getting things right, right away. Um, first and foremost, be proud of the decision that you made. Um, you are obviously super, super resourceful and you are aware that there is a much better way to live, a much better way to enjoy your dog. Maybe your world has been closing in on you. Maybe, you know, everything you ever felt like you wanted to do with your dog is becoming like impossible. Um, so taking this first step is a really, really big deal. Um, we're super proud of you for doing it. And um, we, we commend the investment that you're making, both with your time, financially, energetically, everything. Um, it can't be said enough. Be proud of yourself. Okay, so diving right in. Why dogs do what they do. Let's take a look at it. Number one, temperament. I can't say enough how much the phrase, it's all in how you raise them, is just so, so, so wrong. Um, genetically, all of us kind of have our own types of setbacks. We have our own, um, you know, limitations or, or what just comes naturally to us. And this is not different for the dog. Um, temperament really has a lot to do with your dog's internal drive state, uh, your dog's maybe nervous tendencies or aggressive tendencies. Maybe it's based on the breed, but beyond the breed, it's really the breeding. Um, temperament is really the beginning of, of where this all starts. So if you're feeling a little bit defeated about where you are with your dog right now, please don't beat yourself up too much. There are a lot of dogs out there who are just a little bit complicated, who need a little bit more education or where the people need a little bit more education. And it's not necessarily something that you did wrong to cause these problems. Um, things that work. This is actually a pretty simple concept. Um, dogs are very eager to better their situations. Um, so oftentimes they're, they're really just doing things that work for them. Um, for instance, leash aggression becomes um, a habit and a problem very, very quickly because dogs learn that when they show some kind of um, aggressive behavior, maybe it's barking, maybe it's lunging, that whatever they're nervous or unsure about, um, they can move it away from them. So, you know, if, if it's another dog or if it's a person coming into their space and they're not sure how to deal with that moment, um, dogs will do something, make a behavior, and if it works to back the person or the dog away or to bring something to them, then you can pretty much bet they're going to do it again and that that behavior is going to grow. This, this little meme... Um, on the page here is actually a really good demonstration. Um, I mean, it could be something as simple as your dog's ball going under the couch and your dog barks at it and you get the ball out from under the couch. So that works. So you're inadvertently teaching the dog or the dog is teaching himself what works to get the result that he wants. Next is fear and anxiety. This is a huge culprit for most problems that people have. And often it does relate back to the temperament and it also relates back to maybe having a lack of education or a lack of really clear leadership. So the dog actually becomes sort of fearful of their environment. Maybe it's other dogs, maybe it's people, maybe it's sounds, whatever. And these things can really catapult bad behaviors through the roof very quickly. Um, this could also include separation anxiety, um, any number of things. The fact of the matter is that when the dog is anxious or fearful, the way that they're interpreting their world is it's, it's dramatic. 
they overreact to things. Um, they, they, they feel as though they have to be their own leader. And most of the time, because of this sort of like emotional setback with fear and anxiety, they're not actually equipped to do any of the leading. And that causes a ton of what we see as behavioral problems. Um, and that leads right into things that you maybe have taught them by accident. I would say that because we're human beings, um, it's very easy for us to sort of project our own understanding of the world onto our dogs. And sadly, it almost never works. Um, so for instance, this is a really great example. Maybe you're at the vet and your dog is really, really, really nervous. So as a human, you feel like the right answer is to start nurturing your dog, to start showing them compassion and love and, and you know, really uh, physically be present for them. So you may start coddling them. You may start massaging them or petting them and using a voice that, that, that sounds like, it's okay, it's okay, everything's okay. Now, the problem is that to the dog, you're actually saying, I really like your anxiety. I really like your aggression. You're doing great. Keep it coming. And you're actually encouraging the wrong behavior and the wrong state of mind. Now, if that were a child, that type of nurturing might work because human beings think more in a logical state of mind. It makes more sense to pull affection from one another. Dogs do not. What dogs need is more structure. They need something else to think about. They need their own purpose. And they need to know that you as a leader is super secure, that you protect them from the environment. They have nothing to worry about, but you cannot do that through nurturing. Um, sometimes it might even happen out on a walk. Maybe your dog is showing aggression or is doing something really um, unbecoming and not really uh, acceptable in society, like barking and lunging. And perhaps you pull the dog away. Or, or again, maybe you try some nurturing to make the dog uh, feel like everything's okay. But in fact, what this does is it, it encourages the dog to do this behavior. And especially if you're pulling the dog away or, you're, or if it's a small dog and you're picking it up, you are helping relieve that pressure. So you are co-signing that the behavior that the dog did is right and it makes the scary thing or the thing that they're unsure of go away, which is what the dog wants. They are seeking to make their situation easier. They want pressure to go away. So some of these things you really are teaching your dog by accident and it makes sense because you're not a dog behaviorist. You're just doing the best you can with what you have. Um, that brings us to the final thing, which is just a general lack of education. Okay, so we see a lot of a lot of the time that people, um, I mean, maybe take for granted how common it is and how easy it seems to have a dog, and how much we really desire the dog to kind of just fit into our lives the way that we have um, dreamed it to be, and it doesn't always happen that way. Um, so a lot of the times it just comes down to a lack of education. The dogs don't know any better. They're doing the best that they can with what they have. Maybe they have limited exercise. Maybe they never really learned how to walk on a leash. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they got a little bratty or whatever. But start thinking about it like your dog is not just a royal pain in the ass. He just needs an education just like, just like anyone or anything else. Okay, so here we are, chewed up shoe. I'm sure this is pretty common to a lot of people. We need to talk about the concept of too much freedom. This is honestly the answer to most behavioral problems. Um, again, this paired with all of the other things, temperament, a lack of education, training things by accident. When the dog has too many choices, the odds of them making the wrong choice are super, super high. So what comes to mind right away for me is, you know, when people have problems with um, housebreaking, for instance, um, when dogs are young, or let's say this is a rescue dog that maybe hasn't had a lot of experience in the house or wasn't raised really well, it's just not possible to, ex to give them full roam of a house 
and expect them to not use that house however they see fit with going to the bathroom. Most dogs truly do not know how to cue you to let them know that they, to let you know that they need to go out. And as well, in concept, the dog has no idea that going inside or going outside is even a thing. If they have to go, they have to go. So this is a great example of where too much freedom is truly your enemy. If you have a young dog, for instance, or you, like I said, you have a dog that may be rescued who does not have a clear understanding of housebreaking, the dog should not be loose in the house. The dog should be confined in a crate or it should only be given access to the room that you are in where you can actually be supervising what the dog is doing. It's not much different than having a toddler. You wouldn't give a toddler run of the house without supervision because they don't know anything. <laughs> they don't know anything at all. So this also goes for dogs who have destructive behaviors. Um, they might be stealing shoes and chewing them like this little German Shepherd in the picture. Um, Right off the bat, if you're having these types of problems within your house, maybe it's counter surfing, maybe it's bolting out the door, maybe it's chewing things or, or grabbing things that they shouldn't have and running, bet, my bet is, is that your dog has way, way, way too much freedom. So if you can start looking at things through that perspective, think about ways that you can start limiting the, the freedom kind of like you would a, a young child to start to set your dog up for success. That's the goal here. We want to just start to understand the way that they see the world and how to set them up for making the right decisions. And frankly, most of the time when you're raising a dog, preventative um, actions is your best bet where the dog never even learns how to chew shoes or pee in the house or counter surf or whatever because you're very diligent, your awareness is on them, and when your awareness cannot be on them, they are otherwise secured in a crate or with a baby gate or what have you, whatever is appropriate for you. This also goes for a dog, you know, being on a leash and, and so forth. And, and we're going to get into that um, a little later on in, in the slides here. So ways that you can get control back. I started to talk about this already. So number one, using a crate. Um, some people do not like the idea of a crate. Uh, they think it's cruel. They think it's mean, but I'll tell you what, a dog who is raised with a crate as a place of comfort, as a place of solitude, a place where a dog can really, really rest and feel like they can just let their anxieties go. It is the biggest, um, it's the biggest blessing for a dog and for the family. So right off the bat, use a crate. Um, if you don't know how to introduce um, your dog to a crate, we can discuss that together and we can start making that a part of your training plan. But this will be a huge lifesaver, especially if you're dealing with things like, like chewing, housebreaking. Um, perhaps your dog's really not ready to be alone and loose in the house. And being in a crate really makes a dog feel secure. It's like an off switch. It's the, it's the one place that they can come to where they feel like they can just relax go to sleep and not worry about anything. Next, it sounds simple, but um, not used often enough, a leash. And I'm not talking about a 30 foot long flexi leash. I'm talking about like a, a secure, ideally leather, six foot leash or, or shorter, what, you know, whatever you prefer. But I can't tell you enough how many times I hear about dogs being off leash and having no recall or, or you know, perhaps the dog needs a little more guidance if someone is coming in the house. Leashes can be used inside the house as well. Um, let's not forget that. So it doesn't have to be just when you go outside. Leashes can be important anywhere that the dog needs a little bit more structure, a little bit more understanding of what to do. Um, so please, please, if your dog has no training, no understanding of being off leash, don't risk it. It's not worth it. Um, you know, you don't need the liability of a dog fight of losing your dog, your dog not coming back, getting hit by a car, whatever. It is not worth it. Keep the leash on until you have um, given the dog access to an education that teaches it to be off leash. That goes for in the house, in the yard, and at large, um, anywhere. Next, socializing 101. Um, this is a really, really big topic. I will try to stay brief for the sake of this video. But 
really socializing has been misunderstood um, so much in the pet world. And I'd really love to get the word out there that socializing is not about meeting everybody and every dog that you see out in the world. Um, oftentimes that type of, that type of style, um, of socializing a dog is actually extremely stressful for dogs, especially dogs that have no true leadership, no true guidance, um, to go, to go meet everybody and every dog that you see. It's, it's not, um, it's not conducive for good behavior down the road, even if your dog has a great temperament. So socializing you know, especially if you're having trouble with, with aggression or you have a dog that's really, really fearful or a dog that's super excitable and difficult to control. Um, for now, please avoid those situations. Um, you just really don't need to create an uphill battle where your dog is getting more and more experience, where things are not going well, or you're inadvertently teaching really bad behaviors. Um, it's, it's much, much better to you know, stick to yourself on walks. Um, don't try to integrate your dog into social parts of your life yet. So if that's something that you're struggling with, really dial back on those situations. Um, don't keep creating problems. It just makes it that much more difficult to train out of a dog later. Once you are into training, you will have more than enough tools to conquer any situation you want. So hang on to the socializing for now. Um, as I've mentioned already, prevention is a really huge key sometimes. Um, just like I said a second ago in the socializing, sometimes the best thing you can do is do nothing. Um, it's <laughs> If you're having a lot of problems in different areas, and, and especially since you're right up to starting this course, just really, really dial back from the situations you are unsure about. And I promise you in the next weeks to come, you're going to have a lot more confidence, a lot more understanding of, of how to deal with your dogs in the situations that you want to. And last but not least, of course, um, quality training. So this goes back to the idea of just giving your dog an education. Um, most dogs can be very, very, very successful in the home, with the family, in social settings, um, really whatever you want. If you can dream it, your dog can probably do it with quality training. So you have found that already. You are just, um, just in the beginning of your little journey. All right. So let's talk about some things that don't work because this might validate, um, some of your experiences that you've already had. Um, or it may help you understand other dogs you've had in the past or that friend zone, whatever. Number one, medication. Um, this is a touchy subject because um, most vets will prescribe your dog medication if you're having anxiety or aggression issues. And to be honest with you, the first thing that I do when a dog comes into my training program who is on medication is I start to wean them off. What I don't like about medications with human beings or dogs alike is that it is not something that is designed to stand alone. Even if you think about human beings, um, what goes hand in hand with, with medication for depression, for anxiety, for ADD, what have you, is talk therapy. It's, you know, it's going hand in hand with an education. It does not stand alone. The other thing that I don't like about medication for dogs is that they cannot communicate how they feel. Anyone who has taken anything from an antibiotic to an antidepressant knows there are side effects that are sometimes um, not worth it or sometimes make you feel way worse than you did initially. So, you know, it might curb some of the experiences that you're going through with your dog um, a little bit but it is never going to solve your problems. Just, uh, just like anything else, drugs alone cannot do the trick. It's a crutch. Um, and in my opinion, in my opinion only, I'm not a veterinarian. In my opinion, um, it's not right. So please know that if your dog is on medication, um, when it comes to our boarding, boarding program, um, with your permission, I would, I would encourage, um, you know, the entire situation to come away from those drugs. Next is spaying and neutering. Um, I hear more times than not, especially dogs that are um, 
being aggressive, um, and I hear vets encourage this as well, that neutering a male in particular will um, make the aggression go away. And this could not be further from the truth. Um, as, as far as my experience is concerned, the only thing that neutering does for a male dog is if your dog is very, very, very interested in roaming, um, like escaping, running away to go look for girls, that is something that could be altered. But as far as, you know, scent marking in the house, aggression, um, anything like that, that's training, that's management, that's education. So if you have gotten your dog neutered and you're still experiencing problems, if you plan on getting your dog neutered because you have problems, um, it's not going to work. So, um, in fact, oftentimes I encourage people to keep their dogs intact until at least two years old so that they can fully grow, so that they can fully develop sexually, socially, and everything else so that their temperaments can be the best that it can be. Again, that is my opinion. I am not a veterinarian, but um, as you're getting to know us in our training program, this is something that we're going to be talking about and that you'll have more and more exposure to. Next, this goes back to one of the first topics, petting and nurturing. We all love to touch and nurture our dogs. Um, it's really inside the human being to be affectionate, to share love through touch. However, this is not something that is um, as much a part of the dog's world or how they communicate with each other. Of course, when dogs get very close within a pack, you'll see them grooming each other, laying near each other, you know, what have you. But what is way more important to a dog is things like structure, exercise, education. And what we want to teach you is how to use petting and nurturing um, where it's really going to be the most effective, where you're learning how to nurture the right behaviors, when to pet, when, when petting is going to help your dog, when it's going to encourage your dog. And we'd like to separate... Um, when it's going to be helpful and when it's really not helping you at all. So that is something we're going to be diving very deeply into, especially if you have signed on to the rest of this fusion course. There's going to be a lot of information about that. Um, higher quality treats. Now this, is, uh, this pulls from the world of positive reinforcement training. Um, a lot of people think that if your dog is not responding to you, if your dog, um, you know, is doing terrible things, that if you just have a super, super high quality treat, that you are going to be able to coerce or lure your dog into a different type of behavior. And that ultimately, if you can just figure out that treat that your dog would die for, you can fix anything. Sadly, again, this is further from the truth than I can describe. Um, what does work, however, since we are considered balanced dog trainers, we love using food. Um, but you need to develop food drive appropriately. Um, it is never about increasing the quality of the treat. You do not have to go around the world with sardines in your pocket. I think that's silly. And if you've done it already and you hated it, I'm happy for you because you don't have to anymore. Um, what you'll find is that when it comes to treats, if a dog doesn't have any understanding of a reward system, if your dog doesn't really have any food drive, then no treat in the world is going to go above the threshold of the drive states that your dog goes to when he's misbehaving. That goes for aggression, that goes for prey drive, like whatever's happening, a cookie cannot infiltrate the brain of a dog when he's at 100. So if you have failed with this in the past, please don't be defeated. We are going to show you another way to be able to use food, to be able to use positive reinforcement, but really done the right way. Next, gentle leaders, harnesses, flexi leashes, all this uh, equipment. So um, the problem with all of these things is that um, they tend to just prevent a dog from doing certain behaviors. They don't actually teach the dog anything. Furthermore, these types of collars and, and harnesses don't actually give you control over your dog at all. I mean, the harness, for instance, was designed to help a dog pull. So if you're using a harness to 
stop your dog from pulling. I mean, right off the bat, you're, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball. Um, flexi leashes are, you know, a trained dog's nemesis out on a walk because as soon as you see a dog on a flexi leash and maybe it's your own, you can bet anything that that person does not have control. And in an emergency, it's, it's the worst type of leash you can have. Not only do you not have control of your dog, but they're, the leashes are known to wrap around ankles to make pretty severe burns. Um, they're very clumsy. They're difficult to hold on to if your dog gets, a, gets to running and hits the end of the leash really hard. Um, if you're using anything like a, like a gentle leader, which, by the way, dogs hate. They hate them. Um, or harnesses, please just stop right now. Um, we are going to show you what type of equipment really, really works and what's going to be in your best interest. So I hope that helps. Um, this was a mini introduction. Uh, you know, we really want to start giving you access to the way we think about dogs and, and just kind of get you going on the right track to start right away. Um, hopefully you found something that you can implement in your own life. And if you have any questions or you'd like a little bit of more information about what you've heard in this video, please don't hesitate to ask us. Um, we would love to make sure you know that you are understanding the information you're receiving. And of course, we are going to build on this very, very, very much. So if you are gearing up to start the rest of this um, fusion course, um, we are going to get very deep into these topics. Um, each week is designed to build upon the last week. So this week we're going to talk a lot about preparing your dog for the drop-off. We're going to talk about how to make things the easiest on your dog as well as yourself, kind of what to expect from this program. And as the weeks go on, you are just going to have access to tons and tons of information that you can work at at your own pace and um, really build upon over time so that when it comes time for your dog to go home and be integrated in your family again, you are going to feel so confident about the way that all of this is transpiring. It's going to come together beautifully. So thank you so, so much um, for signing up, for investing in us, for choosing us. Um, we really I have so much gratitude for your intuition and, and for just being a part of this. We're so excited to help you reach your goals with your dog. So on that note, we will continue um, whatever the next step is for you, whether that's classes, board and train, or the fusion course. We are so excited. Okay, take care.